Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. I was asked on the Gentleman Gamer Facebook page by a few people to recount the story of the worst RPG I have ever run. Now, I've certainly ran some bad games. I have been running games for 11, 12, maybe 13 years. And so not every one of them is going to be a winner by any stretch. Although I don't know of any games that were bad from beginning to end where all the players walked away and thought, well, this was shit. At least they were polite enough to not say that to me. Most of the time, I will think a game went badly. And I would say if I thought that, then that probably is the case. Uh, because after all, I'm the man at the helm, in a sense. Um, rather than come up with one particular example of a bad game I've ran. I've kind of thought about it a little and looking at the various games on my shelves of which I have plenty I can think that any game that I've ran more than a few times there's always been a weak link in the series. I've ran a very poor vampire game once, I think the first one I ever ran. Um, Godlike is one. Godlike which is my favourite superhero role-playing game set in the Second World War the first time, not first time I ran it, one of the times I ran it, there was a player who was obsessed with military, you know, arms, armaments, artillery, calibers of guns. That's not my speciality. I am more keen on the psychology of war, diplomacy. Um, why do people do what they do? How do people maintain their mental stability on the battlefield? What do you do when you're confronted with a morally ambiguous situation as you are in many a war? That is where I find interest in conflicts rather than how much damage can this weapon do? Now, I had a player who was absolutely obsessed with military. I didn't know he would be playing, or rather, I didn't know he had this obsession until we started playing. And so every question he threw at me, which you could argue was perfectly valid given the subject matter, I was unable to answer. It left me feeling incredibly unprepared and unprofessional and I think had a negative impact on the way I ran the game. Similarly, the same player, when we were playing All Flesh Must Be Eaten once, I was running All Flesh based on Resident Evil 1, so the characters were the mm, uh, STARS, Special Task Force? I don't bloody know what STARS stands for anymore. Um, Tactical and Rescue Squad. Special Tactical and Rescue Squad, I think. Either way, um, there is a talk of a cult operating out of a mansion in a big forest. Bravo team goes out to investigate it. Their helicopter crashes, so you have to go out and investigate it and find out what's going on. Cue zombie mayhem, because the mansion that's out there is in fact a big uh, zombie-producing laboratory. That's uh, Resident Evil 1 in a nutshell. So, the characters were supported by NPCs such as the ones appearing in Resident Evil, like Barry Burden and Albert Wesker and the like. Um, and there was going to be the big conspiracy regarding Umbrella, which member of the team is a traitor and so on. Now, one of the players, uh, the same one as in Godlike, asked me a question. He said, where is Raccoon City in America? And I thought my feet and said, Washington State is in the Great Tractor Forest out there. And he said, okay, how far are we away from Seattle? And I thought, oh, God, I don't know that, and I'm rubbish with distances. And so I made something up, I threw a figure in. And he said, oh, well, we're not near anywhere near any other built-up area. Seattle is the closest city. And I said, yes. And he said, okay, well, I'm going to radio into Seattle to see whether we can get some backup to uh, come back to the city. And... Um, I don't suggest that we fly out until we know that they're coming, so that if we go missing they can send more people out. For some reason this completely threw me. Now in retrospect, I don't think that was terribly bad a suggestion on his part, but that followed by him coming across locked doors. Anyone familiar with Resident Evil knows there's all these key cards and things that you have to use to get into hidden chambers. He made, again, a perfectly valid point, well these are wooden doors, why don't we just kick through them? Why don't we just shoot the locks off? We've got explosives, why don't we blow these things up? And it highlighted the differences between a video game and a role-playing game. You know, Chris Redfield will in the video game will go around for bloody ages, keeps passing by these wooden doors that apparently have a helmet symbol on or an armour symbol on. Why doesn't he just use his stupid amount of strength to barge the door off its hinges? Um, 
not all of them are metal lined, you would presume, but then I suggested that they were, that they were all actually wired in, they were all electronic, it was just they were designed to look like rustic wooden doors. So he decided he would try and rewire the electrics, he was looking for the cables, he wanted to find out where it went, how to disable it, that kind of thing. It really, it was game breaking. And it was also game-breaking because he had played the video game and he knew that Albert Wesker in the video game was the traitor and so for the first opportunity that he got he shot the commander. There was no reason in character for him to do this. He was a bit of a disruptive player, I think you can tell. But again, completely knocks my confidence, ruined the game for me until he left, thank God. Um, in fact, in retrospect, the player himself was a complete prick and I don't recall any encounter with him where he was a nice guy. I'd certainly never play with him again. I'll run for him again. Well, I'll play with him again, to be quite honest. Uh, I remember him as being a, yeah, complete arsehole. So, um, that's a few games. I remember running Chin, The Warring States, at the UK Games Expo once. The game itself went very well. The players' characters had to make their way into a vast jungle in order to uh, find the... I'm trying to remember the... Um, the, the uh, crux of the game was something like immort immortality. There was the secret to immortality in the centre of the jungle. It turned out to be a newborn baby being protected by Kitsune. But on the way, they encountered a tribe of pygmies. And for some stupid reason, I had written it in that these pygmies were mutes. They spent about half an hour with this bloody pygmy camp, if not longer, during which the only way I could communicate was through mime. And I don't know why I did it. It was it, it was just such a stupid idea that I didn't think through at the time. I thought, oh, you know, this will make them unique. Have them all to be mutes. Have them have no language whatsoever. Resulting in, of course, them trying to find out the way to go through the jungle and the pygmies just having to mime the way to go through the jungle. And should have just drawn a bloody map, shouldn't I? Um, you know, that that's the kind of thing... With the cases with Godlike and All Flesh Must Be Eaten, that's a player who disrupted the game as far as I was concerned and ruined it for me um, because of my inability to handle his situation. In Chin, that was a situation of my own making. I very much put that on upon myself. I've had other games that were derailed that I thought were particularly bad. Uh, Godlike again, one of the players I deeply respect, a GM I think is fantastic, was having a bad night, and I don't begrudge him that, many of us do, and he decided he'd take his ire out on the one roll engine the system Godlike uses by forming his own bell curve. While everyone else was going through the adventure, there he was just rolling dice, rolling dice, rolling dice, first two dice, two dice, two dice, two dice, ten minutes later, three dice, three dice, three dice, and he was trying to prove that it was impossible to actually get successes in the game and loudly announcing as such. I understand he was going through some bad times at the time, and again, I don't hold a grudge about that, but the result was a complete undermining of the game, the system, me, and I remember exploding at him afterwards in a rare event of anger. I don't often get angry, um, but I was particularly pissed off with him. He was very apologetic, explained, and yeah, just kept saying sorry. And to be honest, we, we patched things up. It was swift, but it was a game that went badly because of one player and my inability to, at the time, I should have just said, you know what, if you don't like the system, we, we don't have to play this, or you don't have to play this. We'll just run something else next week, but if you don't want to play, go to the bar. Um, Planescape up above me. The few books I have remaining, I will one day buy them again, I'm sure. <laughs> I hope so. Um, I ran a very fun campaign of it online um, for a few members of the YouTube RPG Brigade. And in the last session, one of the players, his character basically killed one of the other characters and arranged the death of the other one. There wasn't really any motive behind it, there was no real reason behind it. Uh, it resulted in a complete party breakdown, and the worst of it was the players at the time thought it was me that was doing that, so that I had orchestrated this, I hadn't, and I had lost control. Um, in a rare event, I suppose. It seems like this is common, but bear in mind this spans uh, 13 years of GMing. Um, yeah, please don't judge me too harshly. 
I had to watch, you know, I watched. There was nothing against what he was doing. He, this was the last session, he could do what he wanted, and one of the players just acted in this incredibly selfish, disruptive way through his character, might I add. This was his character's actions, but that doesn't necessarily um, defend what he did, because no one else was expecting it. None of the other players saw it coming. That's the kind of thing where if you want your character to be built up to end up becoming a megalomaniac psychopath, give the other players some forewarning so they might be able to react to that. Don't just stab one in the back and then take the give the other one over to a bunch of Beata Zeus to take back to the Nine Hells. It was um, not that brilliant, to be honest, and in retrospect I was pretty irritated with the way that game ended. Again, that was my running though, I should have had better control of the situation. So there are plenty of games that I've run badly at the time, sessions I've run badly, very rarely a campaign have I run badly. The worst game I've probably ran would be They Came From Beneath the Sea, one of the sessions I ran of that at the UK Games Expo, because I allowed the players to reach what was ultimately a MacGuffin, a great big laser cannon that the lizard men type creatures were operating from a huge um, sort of water tower. Now, the idea was that this great big laser cannon was supposed to be taking out boats and helicopters that were incoming towards the island where this terror mission was going on. And if the player's characters approached it uh, through various conflict, that laser cannon would blow up. It would not be allowed to get into the hands of the player's characters. And yet, through their wiles, they were able to do that. They did it through ways I didn't expect. Now, if I'd been thinking on my feet, I would have just set an auto-destruct on that cannon, and no one would have given much of a toss, and the adventure could have continued. But for some reason I didn't. I decided to reward them by giving them the big weapon. And I shouldn't have done that. I was enjoying myself too much, and I lost control. And the result of it was they could pretty much wade through everything else that I'd had prepared, and for some reason I was unprepared to improvise or ad-lib anything that would be a greater challenge. I've there, was, there are so many ways in retrospect I could think of them losing that weapon. It depowers itself, it blows up, it overheats. They don't know how to operate it because they're, they're human and it was aliens that were using it. It they could have been anything, but for some reason I allowed them to keep it until the end of the game. And it disrupted everything. And that is probably my worst role-playing session as a GM because I... I killed my own plot. I killed the challenge. And I know that at least one of the players disliked so that it became so easy. He just thought, well, what's the point in us doing this if we can go around killing things? I suppose in one respect you could have said, well, find a way to lose it, but that was on me. So I would say that's probably the worst RPG I've ever run, which is a shame because it's the one I created. <laughs> uh, but I've ran good sessions of it as well. Um, and who knows if I'll ever go back to it, I don't know. But um, that game in particular, that session in particular, was bloody awful. Um, I'm just look at thinking about other game sessions I've run badly. Um, there's no doubt plenty. No doubt there are plenty. But the main point of the, doing this video is to show, I suppose no one's... Well, everyone's fallible. I suppose if, even if the Pope was running an RPG, he'd be fallible. He's probably fallible anyway, let's be honest. Uh, he is definitely fallible. It's not like he can go around committing crimes and getting away with them. Um, but obviously no one's perfect. No one always runs a 100% perfect game. And certainly I haven't. I've run plenty of games that haven't been perfect. Much to my dismay. But the best thing you can do is learn from them, to think back on them, like I have done, I suppose, because it allows you to repair in the future. Of the games that I've run badly, I know that I've run, you know, it's like one out of out every 20 games, maybe, probably even less than that. And that's, that's good. You know, I'm on a good average. I think most of the games I run are, are good. Uh, I, I make mistakes. Every GM does. And I certainly don't really beat myself up about any of the mistakes I've done because I just sort of vow to myself, make a note in my notepad, don't do this again. And sure enough, I don't. I learn. 
and AI Evolve, and I test the fences in different places, uh, like a Velociraptor. So, that was the worst RPG I've ever run, or rather a cornucopia of bad sessions. Thank you very much for watching.